Good morning, guys. I hope you're doing good. In today's class, we're going to be talking about traveling around the world. So when you hear, when you listen to this expression, traveling around the world, what comes to your mind? What can you tell me about it? Daniel, what's your idea? What can you tell me about this? Dubai, I would like to go to the United States. Um, I think also that in order for you to travel around the world, you have to, to have a lot of money. Some cities are more expensive than others, so because of that, I think you've got to have some money. I going to I like I like traveling. I uh, I would like to, to to travel on an airplane, uh, Dubai, uh, New York. It's my dream, it's my dream to travel. Houston, we have a problem. Have you been on a particular situation like this before? I know, English learners have been in this situation. This video, we're gonna help you out how to improve this, how this situation could be no longer existent in your life. On today's video, we're gonna be focused on speaking, but particularly, we're gonna be talking about fluency in speaking. Being fluent in a language, it's something that almost everybody who is learning another language or a foreign language wants to master. Let's do this. Primero que tenemos que entender es que esto es normal. It's not something from another world. It's something that happens to every single person who is trying to learn another language. Not a problem. So just relax and practice because everything is gonna be alright. It is not a problem that we got more ideas on our brain than the ones that we can express ourselves. Now I know that lots of people struggle with this particular situation. Why am I not fluent in English? I want to be fluent. I want to have this master of fluency on my English, but I, I just can't. What should I do? What am I doing wrong so I can do something different and change this? As you guys know, we always say that practice makes perfection. If you want to be perfect or not perfect, but pretty good at something, then you're going to practice. Now, be patient because you don't wake up being fluent. Being fluent in English, it's something that is not going to be just you know? No, it takes time. It takes effort. You gotta do your best. You gotta work. Why? Because there are two aspects that happen here and we gotta point them out and explain you why is this. The first one, when we talk, there are different organs que se mueven, que están en movimiento. We got the tongue, we got the vocal cords, we got the lungs in order to produce the voice. ¿Qué significa este aspecto físico? Bueno, que tienes que entrenar tu habla. No puedes pretender que vas a tener fluidez, que vas a hablar de manera perfecta si no hablas. No es posible. Hay ciertos sonidos en un idioma que no existen en otros. Articulaciones, movimientos de boca, de labio, de lengua que no existen en un idioma y que sí existen en nuestro idioma natal. Por esta razón, it's necessary, it is mandatory que usted practique as much as possible. El segundo aspecto es el aspecto mental. Is the mental aspect. What does this mean? It means that your brain needs to find the appropriate words for you to connect them on a sentence. So because of that, you need to learn vocabulary as well. You need to learn vocabulary. And I know that there are some problems. There are some common problems that come along with this. There are a lot of people who say, oh, because I'm shy. Oh, because I don't have anybody who to practice with. Excuses like these, yeah, I say they are excuses because those are not, you know. La forma más correcta de enfrentar un problema no es disfrazándolo, sino más bien aceptando el problema y hacer algo al respecto. Ahora, ¿cuáles son los consejos que te puedo dar para que tú tengas una mejor fluidez y que sin duda alguna te van a ayudar bastante? Vamos al primero. Leer textos cortos de acuerdo a tu nivel en voz alta. Look for a book that is according to your level. No leer un libro de palabras que son súper nuevas y que no manejas, sino trata de buscar un libro que sea apropiado al nivel que tienes. So, leer conversaciones en voz alta, leer textos en voz alta en inglés te van a ayudar a trabajar la parte física o fisiológica. 
la parte de el habla en este caso, no tanto la parte cerebral, aunque sí influye de una manera eh, en segundo plano, pero trabaja más la parte oral, la parte fisiológica que tiene que ver con el habla. Recuerda que para leer, claro, si sí tienes que escuchar bien cómo se pronuncian esas palabras para que no estés pronunciando las palabras de una manera incorrecta. Recuerda que la principal herramienta para nosotros poder hablar es escuchar. Si no escuchamos, no podemos hablar. Pero ya que sepas cuál es el, la, el contexto de las palabras, por eso mencionábamos de que debe de ser un libro que sea de acuerdo a tu nivel, que tú tengas conocimiento de cómo se puedan pronunciar esas palabras, para que entonces cuando la estés pronunciando no te puedas equivocar y digas, oh, ¿y ¿cómo se pronuncia esa palabra? No me acuerdo. Y si no recuerdas, entonces la buscas, confirmas y lees out loud en voz alta, no solamente en tu mente. Recuerda que lo que estamos buscando ejercitar es la parte de los órganos fonadores para que tus órganos bucales se vayan adaptando a la producción de ese sonido en particular y para que cuando tengas la oportunidad de hablarlo o producir esos sonidos se te haga mucho más fácil porque ya tu lengua, tu boca, tu, tus, tus cuerdas vocales están adaptadas a esos sonidos porque en un determinado momento en el pasado los estuviste practicando. De esta manera nosotros practicamos y reforzamos la parte fisiológica que tiene que ver con el habla. La segunda parte, ¿cómo practico entonces la parte mental? Very good, very good question. Una estrategia muy interesante que nosotros podemos utilizar en este caso es aprender palabras, ¿ok? Aprender palabras y practicarlas. Puede ser una por día, puede ser dos por días. Ahora bien, te sugiero que no aprendas words by word, like word by word. No, because when we do that, we tend to uh, learn on a different way that we humans learn. We don't learn word by word. We learn sentences by sentences, right? So that word that you are going to learn in that day or in that particular day, try to learn it by uh, learning a sentence after it, all right? For example, if you are going to learn the word done, then use the word done on a sentence, not on a particular word with a translation in your mother language. No, if you are going to learn that word, Think done, it's one of the most beautiful things to do in the morning. You see, and you're going to be able to produce more, to be more connected with the word, as well as being more fluent because you are practicing with the word, you're practicing English, you're practicing by sentences, which is the way that we speak by sentences, not by words, right? Another strategy it's practicing in conversations, for example, or in books, as we were saying before. Those expressions or those sentences that are uh, tricky or are hard because they are connecting so many consonants or they are connecting so many words on a way that it's really hard for us to pronounce, check those. Check those phrases and stop on them and try to practice them as much as you can. Because if you know that you're struggling with a word or with a phrase or with a particular expression, don't jump over that expression. Try to practice until you feel you master it. When I was studying English at the beginning, in the first book I had, I remember there was this expression. I was struggling a lot with it. And it was, the expression said, I bet they're on the table in the restaurant. I bet they're on the table in the restaurant. At the beginning, I was struggling with this situation because was with this expression because it was like so hard for me. Like, I bet they're on the table in the restaurant. All right. And then I was repeating it. I was listening to it first. And then I was listening to it and repeating it. First, slowly, slowly, slowly. And then a little bit normal, normal, a little bit faster faster, faster, I bet they're on the table in the restaurant. I bet they're on the table in the restaurant. I bet they're on the table in the restaurant. And that's expression that if you don't practice it, whenever you got the situation and you're gonna try to tell it or to say it, you're gonna struggle because you have not practiced this expression before and you might fail or mispronounce some words on a particular part or point of the sentence. So that's why it is important that you need to practice those expressions that are or seems hard for you to express or to pronounce. So that's something really interesting, guys. 
that you should always have on mind. Remember that if you're struggling with a particular sentence, try to pra practice it, practice it, practice it as much as you can. So eventually you can master it. Eventually you can feel like, oh, I, I mastered this word now. I mastered this expression now. And then you can say, I better on the table in the restaurant. I better on the table in the restaurant. Remember our tips. Remember to practice. Remember to read aloud. Remember to repeat those statements because when you do that, your English is gonna grow. Thank you so much for watching our video. Again, guys, you know, my name is Daniel. Remember, if you, you know, like the video, just give us a like, uh, share with your partners so they can improve also their fluency as well as their friends also. Remember that if you haven't subscribed yet to our channel, this is the moment to just subscribe. It won't cost you a penny. Thank you for watching. My name is Daniel. You have a nice one, guys.